guys, welcome back to Career Launch. My name is Nora Cavazos. I'm Katie Sorensen. I'm from the Gap Out in San Marcos. And I'm Debbie from the Gap Out in San Marcos. And today we'll be going over absences and tardiness as well as grooming and hygiene. What do you guys think is acceptable for an absence of tardy? Emergencies? Like what kind of emergencies? Sickness. So, you know, emergency party comes up, is that acceptable? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> um, so, if you're going to be tardy, what do you guys think you should do first? Call. 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 Always call. It's always let your supervisor know, um, hey, I'm going to be late. Try to give an estimate of how, much, how long you're going to be late so they know, you know how much time they're going to have to cover for you or whatnot. Um, so if you're going to just call out for work, how long do you think you should call before your shift? 24 hours. If you can, yes. Um, and our job from the gap, we want them to call at least like two or three hours before. That way we can use somebody else to cover them or whatnot. So it kind of just depends on your supervisor, but 24 hours would be the best. But, you know, emergencies pop up unavoidably and... You know, you can't always call 24 hours in advance. So an unaccept or acceptable absences can be something like uh, getting sick, family emergency, or, you know, if you have car problems or whatnot, a death in the family. Um, but if you call in every week with those, they're going to become unacceptable. Every different employer has different policies yeah. on um, what, for even unacceptable absence or excusable absences, sometimes they do require proof as well. Um, and like I said, all workplaces are different and every situation um, can be handled by situation by situation, employee by employee. So here's a few scenarios. I'm going to want you guys to tell me if they're acceptable or unacceptable. Um, so Miles has been employed by Tigley Tech Store for three months. Miles would like to attend a concert upcoming in two weeks. Miles notifies his employee the day of the event that he will not be able to come to work that day. Is it an acceptable absence or not acceptable? Mm -hmm. acceptable? So he said that he knew about the concert for two weeks, so he should have told his employer two weeks ago that he won't be able to work that day and maybe asked uh, to have that day off. Steve has been, has been employed at the local grocery store for five weeks. During those five weeks, he has never been late. One hour before Steve is scheduled to report, he calls the supervisor to tell him he's running 30 minutes late and will be there as soon as possible. So he's not a chronic tardy person. He's always on time. Everybody's had one of those days that just can't get anything to go right, right? You've had one of those days. So if you're always on time and you are late one day, make sure you call and everybody should be good with that. So the last scenario, it's in approximately 30 minutes before Donald is scheduled to report to work. On his way out the door, he is notified that his grandfather, who is in the hospital, has died. After regaining his composure, Donald calls his employer five minutes before his start time to request off. So he's notifying his employer as soon as he found out, pretty much. Yeah. So as long as you do that, now if you find out, you know, at 8 o'clock in the morning, and, and you wait till, you wait till you know, you 5 p.m., then, I mean, your employer still should let you out, but... You know, you've known, you've known all day. So just try to do it as you know as soon as you can. You know, gain your composure. Don't be on the phone sobbing and hysterics and whatnot. But you know, gain your composure. Call them. Be like, hey, my granddad just died. I'm not going to be able to come in today. And that should be all you have to say. What would you do if you like forgot? Like you would just still call them and like apologize and be like, sorry, I forgot to call you all. Not like, calling at all is worse than. Calling later. So, like yeah. you were supposed to be at work at two o'clock and you had so much going on, grandpa decided, mom told you you need to pack up and you didn't have it home, whatever it may be, and you're doing all that and you five forgot minutes. to call work and it's even five o'clock and you were supposed to be there at two, it's still better to call at five o'clock and just apologize that yes, I'm so sorry for not calling. I'd had an emergency in my family and I was taking care of business versus just not calling us at all. Um, because then we don't know what's going on. Um, You're and just like, where's my employee? And like, right. And so then what goes down is, is a no-call, no-show, which is even worse than just an absence. 
And overall, at the end of the day, you're allotted a certain amount of absences and tardies within a company, and they have that policy set up for you. So they explain that to you, and you have to, it's up to you to keep track of your absences and tardies as well. Personal hygiene and good grooming habitats are crucial to your daily habit, daily health, and safety. Um, and off the job. Proper appearance and hygiene has an effect on your co-workers, customers, supervisors, and everyone around you. Appropriate dress and good grooming guidelines should always be followed. Carol works with you in a large office. She starts works as an office assistant about four weeks ago. Today she came into the office dressed in a mini skirt and a tight low cut blouse. The outfit is quite revealing when she sits down or bends over. She has on so much perfume perfume that you can smell it 20 feet away from her. And her nails are very long and decorated. All right, so now your supervisor just told you that Carol will be helping you answer the phone and complete the filing. Do you think Carol will be a good worker? Explain your reason. I, just, I, I don't think the, the whole look has to do with her being a good, a good worker. She, and she just, can work hard. It's just all about looking professional. So you don't think that her decision in wearing a mini skirt and a low cut blouse and excessive amount of perfume and I mean, it'll pro the perfume will bother the, the people she's working with, but I don't think like, just because she's it. dressed the way she's dressed doesn't mean she's, she's out of work. Yeah. Somebody else shouldn't mess up how you're working. All right, so Joan is employed as a waitress in a popular restaurant. Recently, customers have complained to the manager that they have seen her leave the restroom without washing her hands. Joan is a valued employee. She is very friendly and does her job well. If you were Joan's supervisor, what would you say to her? And what are the risks to a restaurant if, if employees do not practice good hygiene? I would tell her, if you, I walked in and got food from this place, I would not let you touch my food. No, I think, I think I'd just say I'd have to go wash my hands. What you're telling me is I have to be sanitary no yes. matter what the job yes. is. And I have to be clean and dressed appropriately yes. Yes. in order to keep my job. Yes. yes. In order to get the job? Oh yes. yes. I can do it. <laughs> All right. Any other lessons for the day, ladies? Hey guys, today we went over absences and tardies as well as grooming and hygiene. So remember, your absences and tardies add up to be on time and be at work. And it's really important to have good hygiene and be dressed appropriate in your workplace. Stay connected!